everybody. It's a special Friday stream. Uh, it's been very slow because obviously the Oscars are on Sunday. So I thought, why not do a last minute Oscar live stream uh, so that I can give my thoughts on who I think is going to win now that we're just days away from the Oscars. Uh, and you can ask me any questions uh, that you have uh, at the end of the at the end of the stream. Uh, so uh, yes, the Oscars are this Sunday. Hold on, let's get the poster up here. The Oscars are this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be live tweeting the Oscars and I'll be reviewing the show the very next day on the live. Uh, so uh, it's going to be a couple of fun days. Uh, Oppenheimer obviously looms quite large over uh, the Oscars, the Oscar proceedings. Uh, very different experiences are expected, though, for both movies. Oppenheimer is expected to sweep, uh, and then Barbie will be lucky, I think, to win more than just Best Song. I'm very worried about Barbie's experience on Sunday night. I don't think Barbie has to win everything, uh, but I feel like I don't want Barbie to be embarrassed either. Uh, and a big part of that will be how I'm Just Ken goes over. Ryan Gosling will perform his iconic song with like 65 backup dancers. It's going to be a big production. However, when he did his acoustic I'm Just Ken release, uh, you know, a couple of months after the movie came out, I don't really think that it worked out very well, to be honest with you. So I really want to, I really hope that he, that Ryan Gosling can create another moment, right? Uh, and that Barbie can hold its head high as a movie during the telecast, even though it's probably not going to win very much. Uh, or it might just be another problem in the evening for Barbie. You know, it just might be like, and Barbie not only really didn't win anything, but then, it, uh, you know, it embarrassed itself. I don't think it's going to win screenplay, Lisa. We'll talk about that. I think Barbie is, it's looking bad for Barbie. Uh, it's, like the, it's like Barbie was invited to this party just to be embarrassed. So let's see. Uh, so I have seen some of you asking me about the dog from uh, Anatomy of a Fall. Yes, I did see that news. For, uh, it, inv of course, involved Ryan Gosling. For those of you who didn't hear, uh, the dog, Messi, from uh, Anatomy of a Fall, uh, was invited to the Oscar luncheon. And uh, he was so adorable, Ryan Gosling in particular, and Billie Eilish. Barbie apparently loved this dog. Uh, so this dog was so popular that all the other... Um, uh, movies complained and they said it was an unfair advantage because voting is uh, I, I think voting I guess at the Oscars lunch and voting was still going on I mean it's I don't know I don't know how a dog would attend the Oscar telecast let him walk the red carpet for Pete's sake uh, but they said no it's unfair it's an unfair advantage you know too adorable and so the dog is not going to the actual show uh, which, uh, again, he wouldn't be, I don't think, I wouldn't put him in the auditorium, but I see there's no reason why he can't walk the red carpet and take his little doggy pictures. Like, come on, man. It's his moment. Uh, all right, so Jimmy Kimmel, as you can see, is hosting. And as the poster points out, it is his fourth time hosting. The reason that he hosts is because he hosts ABC's late night talk show, and that's become a trend but a lot of times now that, you know, networks use their own talent to host rather than, you know, going for maybe the best host. Uh, now, I think, you know, I'm sure he'll do a fine job. I thought his Barbie sketch was actually quite good. I thought, you know, many people thought it was good. But I do think that ABC has done a poor job playing up the event. I think if you ask the average person if the Oscars were coming up, they would not know they were on Sunday. Uh, I think that the total lack of surprise continues to be a problem. For the Oscars, they come so late that I think everybody's like, you know, we already know who's going to win. Uh, also, I was talking to another critic the other day at the Kung Fu Panda screening, and he pointed out that a big problem is that you don't have to tune in anymore because in live time, all the clips are going to drop on social media. So if you're just paying attention to Twitter or TikTok, you'll see all the big moments, and you don't even have to wait. You'll see them as soon as they happen. So I think that is uh, hurting the actual telecast itself. Now, obviously, one of the things that people are hoping to see during the ads, because that's what you would lose. If you don't tune into the telecast, you're not going to see the ads. And of course, this is expected, you know, they're hoping that it's going to be a big night. You know, it's one of the biggest shows, live shows on television still. And so people 
really want to put their uh, ads on it. Now the question is, will we get any movie trailers? Uh, a number of studios have bought time, but I didn't hear that there was going to be anything new. Uh, you'll probably see uh, reruns of trailers and uh, TV spots that have already come out. Maybe a new TV spot for a couple of things. But I know a lot of you are interested in Wicked. I think, if anything, they'll probably just rerun the spot from the Super Bowl because it's too early for any more Wicked content. You know, they already made their big splash, but I, I think they would probably show a little something. So you'll probably see, uh, you know, trailers, you know, and repurposed TV spots for stuff that's already come out. Uh, I, I, I asked my sources, you know, there's always the possibility of a surprise. Hollywood's getting a little bit better at surprises to combat the, to combat the, uh, the scoop machine. Uh, but right now, uh, nobody is expecting anything new. So let me ask you a, uh, a poll. I know you guys like the poll. So while I talk about Christopher Nolan, I'd like to know what you would like to see from the Oscars, okay? What are you hoping for with the Oscar wins. I don't know why any of you would think there would be a Deadpool trailer. Why would there be? It's not a fit. It's just, you know, it's way too early. And they just put one out at the Super Bowl that was fantastic. Okay, what are you hoping? Remember, No Way Home was not advertised that much. They really kept it close to the vest, and I thought that was smart. All right, what are you hoping for with the Oscars? Oppenheimer, Sweep. And then uh, a number of movies, uh, a number of movies recognized, because I think those are obviously your two options. Now, while we discuss that, let me just say, I do believe that tomorrow is, I mean, Sunday night is really going to be Nolan's night. Finally, Christopher Nolan shall be celebrated. Uh, he has been wanting it for a very long time. It's the whole reason he made Dunkirk, but you know, didn't work out. But uh, I think that the combination of Oppenheimer being a very well-received film and really no competition of that caliber is really putting him in a great position. And to be honest with you, even though, as you know, I didn't care for a lot of the creative aspects of Oppenheimer, I do respect it as a film, and I do think that Nolan deserves to be uh, celebrated. I think that he is the new leader of the industry, taking the mantle from Steven Spielberg, which is fascinating to me. Now, this is what's so interesting to me. Christopher Nolan is incredibly less commercial than Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg not only made more commercial films, although Nolan's movies make money, and so do those who uh, imitate his style, from Sam Mendes to now Denis Villeneuve. But Steven Spielberg is a partner with Universal. For instance, here's another funny Ryan Gosling story. Ah, Ryan Gosling, so good at promotion. So Ryan Gosling said he was at an event, and Steven Spielberg was coming towards him, and Ryan Gosling was like, I'm sorry, are you talking to me? And Spielberg is like, yes, I'm talking to you. I saw Fall Guy. And I think it's interesting that Steven Spielberg sees all of the Universal movies in advance, apparently. So he said, I saw Fall Guy, which is, you know, Ryan Gosling's big summer movie. And Steven Spielberg apparently loved it. Now, a lot of celebrities have liked movies in the past hasn't necessarily turned out for the movie, like The Flash. But I thought that was very interesting. Ryan Gosling promoted himself, and he promoted... Um, uh, uh, the Fall Guy and Barbie. It was incredible. Uh, but, it's, you know, Steven Spielberg also is incredibly uh, influential in the theme parks uh, for Universal. So Steven Spielberg is a very different type of uh, industry leader than Christopher Nolan. But here's where it gets interesting. The movie space is smaller than it once was. It's fighting with streaming for your attention and social media. And so I think that Christopher Nolan gives it that cachet that distinguishes it from those other platforms. So he's the hero we need right now. So I think that that is very, very interesting to me. Uh, but yeah, so I think Christopher Nolan, it's gonna be all about him tomorrow uh, on Sunday night. It's gonna be all, all about Nolan. It's gonna be Nolan's big night. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the rest, let me close the poll. So I'm gonna go through all the main categories, everything except the shorts, and then uh, you can ask me anything that you'd like at the end of the stream for 10 minutes, okay? And I'm gonna tell you who I think is gonna win at this point. All right, so 64% of you would like to see everybody get some recognition, while 35% of you are hardcore Oppenheimer fans, and you want to see it dominate. Ah, I love it. Oh, Daniel, that's a good point. Steven Spielberg might have watched Fall Guy because David Leach was going to potentially dra up, dra uh, direct the next Jurassic Park movie. He's doing his research. That's great. I think that's still hilarious. That didn't work out. 
All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so here are the noms. You can see a nice big picture. And then I've got this glorious new arrow to debut as I tell you who I think is going to win. All right, I think it's almost guaranteed that Oppenheimer is going to win Best Picture. Uh, I think any potential upsets might be Anatomy of a Fall or The Zone of Interest, to be honest with you. But maybe poor things, but I don't think so. I think it's going to be Oppenheimer. I think it's almost guaranteed. So Oppenheimer, almost for sure. All right, so then next up. Best Director. All right, let me bring the arrow back in. Here it comes. I think it's going to be Christopher Nolan. For sure, a thousand percent. There's no question in this in this case. He is he's wanted he's wanted the Oscar for a very long time. He's like Leonardo DiCaprio. He wanted the Oscar for so long, and uh, that's what. So it's going to be Nolan for sure. All right, then. So so far we've got two for Oppenheimer. All right, then Best Actor. This is obviously between Killian Murphy and Paul Giamatti. Uh, they've been winning all the awards up until now. It's been divided between the two of them. And I got to say, I'm going to go Killian Murphy. That's right. He won the SAG, right? Who won the SAG? Let me check again. Yeah, Killian Murphy. He's going to win. I think he's going to win. Whoever wins the SAG usually wins. I love Paul Giamatti. He's a great dude, but it's going to be Killian Murphy. So, so far, yeah, that's right, Danny. Three for Oppenheimer already. It's a sweep right now. Hey, Gary. All right, so I think it's going to be Killian. Poor Paul Giamatti. He's going to have to have a consolatory in and out. All right, next up, Best Actress. This is a legit race. This is between Lily Gladstone and Emma Stone, obviously. Two stones. All right. But I think it's going to be, I hope it's Lily Gladstone. I think it would be not great for Emma Stone if she were to beat Lily Gladstone in this regard. I think Emma Stone already has an Oscar. She doesn't need this kind of um, uh, attention. She doesn't need that kind of narrative. I think it's going to be Lily Gladstone. Uh, but this is one of the closer ones. It's, this is a toss-up. It could go either way. Uh, who won the sack? I think it was Lily Gladstone, right? Yeah. With the actors in particular, whoever wins the SAG is probably going to win uh, the Oscar. All right. Next category. Best Supporting Actor. No question, Robert Downey Jr. He's definitely going to win. Uh, I think it's a, a, you know, Paul Giamatti's not getting his career award, but I believe that Robert Downey Jr. is. Hey, Renee, thanks for upgrading. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be Robert Downey Jr. without question. And he'll, I'm sure he'll give a wonderful speech. And this is kind of welcoming him back into the artistic fold after his Marvel romp. So uh, I think, you know, Iron Man is what he's truly contributed to the Academy, you know, I mean, to the in industry. But he's going to get his Oscar for uh, Oppenheimer. No way is it going to be Ryan Gosling. I would like it to be Ryan Gosling. Boy, it's not going to be. All right, it's going to be Robert Downey Jr. All right. That's right, Danny. Oppenheimer's winning everything so far. All right, then, Best Supporting Actress, where Oppenheimer does not have a, um, uh, a nomination. But it doesn't matter, because it's Divine Joy Randolph from The Holdovers. Definitely going to happen. I mean, it would be like a, it would be like a Mickey Rourke-level loss, uh, level snub, if Divine Joy Randolph doesn't win. She's definitely going to win. So, uh, I mean, maybe America Ferreira, because she hasn't shown up in a lot of the other categories. She's the only potential upset, as Lloyd just pointed out. Oh, yeah, Emily Blunt was nominated for Oppenheimer, but she's not winning. So it's Oppenheimer's first loss. Uh, so, yes, so I think Divine Joy Randolph, definitely. All right, then, next category. Original screenplay. Barbie was pulled out of this category. It was so cruel. And so this is who's left. And I got to say, it's going to clearly be Anatomy of a Fall. A thousand percent. There's no question about it. Anatomy of a Fall is going to win this category. Uh, so thank you to all the other movies, but it's going to be Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, all right. Then here's where it gets brutal. Adapted screenplay. Oh, this is tough. This is really hard. Barbie got thrown into this category, 
and uh, everybody else has put Barbie in original. Here she's stuck in poor ad in the adapted screenplay. It really sucks. Um, but here she is. And I got to tell you, I think Barbie's going to lose. I don't think Barbie's going to win. I think it's going to be American fiction. I think everybody wants to see American fiction get something on Sunday night, and this is what it's going to get. Uh, I think that every other movie in this category has a better chance of winning than Barbie, which is really sad. Uh, I think um, Oppenheimer has a better chance. Poor Things has a better chance. Zone of Interest has a better chance. Uh, I mean, I would be delighted to be surprised if Barbie took this, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, all right, so that is adapted, but I think it will be American fiction. Then, animated feature. Oh, this is interesting. This is a toss-up between The Boy and the Heron and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I believe it'll be Spider-Verse. Boy and the Heron had some momentum early on, but Spider-Verse is really picked up at the end. Uh, but it'll be between those two, The Boy and the Heron, or Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. It's, it's huge that Nimona's even in there, though. So that's um, very nice for Nimona, uh, not only for Netflix, but also for uh, the rep important representation for that film. By the way, Nimona was dropped by Disney when they acquired Fox, and Wish did not make it into this category. All right, next up, production design. You would think this would be a slam dunk for Barbie. Couldn't Barbie at least win the craft awards? Nope. I think this is, Barbie has a chance here, but I think there's a very good chance that Poor Things might take it instead. I think the Poor Things is more artistic. I think it's more in the vein of what the Academy likes to see, and Poor Things hasn't won anything so far. So I think that it might swoop in and take the craft awards away from Barbie. So Barbie could win this. I don't think it's impossible. But I think it's going to be poor things for production design. I mean, I would love it to be Barbie because Barbie did such an incredible job. But um, we'll see. All right. Next up. I told you, it could be bad for Barbie on Sunday. All right. Costume design. You would think again this would be Barbie. But nope. I think it's probably going to be poor things again. I think poor things is going to take it. I mean, the costumes were pretty amazing on that film, to be fair. Uh, but I just think that people think Poor Things is a more serious film, which is incorrect. Barbie is actually a very serious film. Uh, but it's just, you know, I think obviously everybody's just going back to that it won the box office and that that is what Barbie gets, which is, uh, you know, I think that's unfortunate that, you know, there's such a, a stigma against commercially successful films. Uh, but I, I do think it will be Poor Things. All right, then next category. Here we go. Cinematography. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. I think that it's going to be Oppenheimer. Again, Oppenheimer. I mean, I think there are a couple of other category people at contenders here that might take it, but Oppenheimer really is a very beautiful film, and they captured a lot of stuff in camera. Uh, you know, at Nolan's insistence, uh, you know, not doing a lot of VFX. So. I feel that that's going to really be rewarded for the cinematography. Just the same reason that Dune 2 is probably going to win cinematography next year. All right. Next category, editing. You know, we're getting into some kind of like vague categories here. So editing, you know, I mean like, uh, we'll see. I mean, they're just going to throw it to somebody's direction. I'm not even sure who's going to win here. Whatever. You know, I mean, nobody's going to be like, no, this movie was robbed for editing. So... It might just be another Oppenheimer win to add to the pile, or they might, you know, spread the love out a little bit and use this category to do so. All right, then, makeup and hairstyling. Barbie ain't even nominated. Okay, I think, let's see here. I think this is a tough one. A lot of it they're going for aging up, okay? They're going for, uh, you know, Golda, Maestro, uh, Oppenheimer, right? Uh, Society of the Snow, you know, had very good makeup with, you know, all the damage done to those survivors. I think it's probably going to go to Maestro. Probably. I mean, I don't think anyone in the industry found what they did there particularly offensive. Uh, I know, I know the people on the internet were upset about it, but everyone I've asked about in the industry has said that that really didn't translate to within the industry. And this is probably going to be Maestro's only win. 
So they might just give it to Maestro so it doesn't walk away up empty-handed. Uh, all right. Then next up, sound. Uh, probably, maybe, I mean, again, uh, everybody here is fine. Mission Impossible, no. But uh, everybody else, I think, has a very good chance of winning this. You know? So, again, it's nice. I'm very happy somebody's going to win an Oscar. All right, then visual effects. This is interesting. I actually think that Godzilla Minus One is going to take it. Uh, the creator, of course, was very impressive that it did all of that for $80 million. But speaking of commercial reward, uh, Gareth Edwards got Jurassic, the next Jurassic movie. So he's fine. He's good. He got his prize. He's going to be doing that. And I think that God Godzilla Minus One, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about, you know, I think that video that they released of the VFX crew in Japan, you know, staying up very late or very early to see the NAM is uh, announced uh, and celebrating uh, was very moving. And I think that, you know, Godzilla Minus One did a ridiculous amount of visual effects, not only with a very low budget, but with very few people. And so I think that... Um, I think that's a great that's a great Oscar story. So I think Godzilla minus one is going to take it. Uh, I think people want to see that speech. All right, then next up, original score. Hmm, interesting. But yes, Oppenheimer. It's going to be Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer's won everything. It's going to be Oppenheimer. And I have to say, um, you know. Ludwig Gorenson, even I, when I was listening to it, when they were playing it every time somebody won something at the Golden Globes, which was a lot for Oppenheimer, I was like, mm, that's a great score. So yeah, he's going to win. He's going to win. All right, next category. Original song. It's going to be Barbie, but the question is which song? I think it's going to be Billie Eilish. I really would like it to be I'm Just Ken. I think that would be a wonderful, wonderful upset. And there already was an upset for that at the Critics' Choice Awards. Yay. I voted for I'm Just Ken as a Critics' Choice member. But I think that it's going to be Billie Eilish. I think that's a very Oscar-y song. Uh, and I think that Ke Ryan Gosling's a a reward, again, is that everybody loved him and he gets to perform at the Oscars. So I think it's going to be um, What Was I Made For? But this will likely be Barbie's only Oscar for the evening. All right, then documentary feature. Again, I'm not following this too closely, so somebody here is going to win. All right, then next up, international feature. This is interesting. I think that it's going to be, while I really liked Society of the Snow, I think it's going to be Zone of Interest. For sure. Um, you know, there are some very good movies here. This is an excellent category. Uh, but I do think it will be Zone of Interest. Godzilla Minus One isn't in this category, nor is Anatomy of a Fall, because uh, neither of those films were nominated by their respective countries. So, nah, that's crazy. But the Zone, uh, people really love the Zone of Interest, and so I think the Zone of Interest is going to take it. Uh, all right, then next up, Best Picture. Oh, yeah, we already did that. All right, so that's everything. All right. All right, so you can ask me anything you'd like for, for 10, well, we'll just do till around 12.25. Hold on, let me get the Q&A up here. Booyah! All right, Oscar Q&A until 12.25. That's like 12, that's like 12 minutes. Does anybody have any questions or comments about the Oscars? Heinz E. Adventures, Sterling K. Brown will not win. Even Sterling K. Brown knows that he's not going to win. But it's a very big deal for him to be nominated and to be there. That's a building block for a career. Now, any film that he's in will say starring Oscar nominee Sterling K. Brown. And that's fantastic for him. Tanvi, I agree about everything about the Greta Gerwig situation. It's really, really, really bad. Mish, it's a little too early for Oscar predictions so far this year, but I'll do an early one, yeah, for sure. But it's too early in the year. Simon Foley says, are you excited for the fashion? You know, kind of, you know. Again, it's, we've had a lot of fashion over the past couple of months. Connor Olmedo says, would you have been happy if Margot and Greta had been, Greta had been nominated but didn't win? Yes, I would have. I always have said I think they deserve the nomination for the recognition, but they do not 
they don't, I don't think they needed – I do not need them to win. But the fact that they weren't even nominated and didn't even have a chance to win is what I found so offensive. Hey, Aubrey. Welcome back. Thanks for – I'm glad you upgraded to Inside Access. Emilio says, Grace, what will be your Oscar meal? I'll have no Oscar meal because I'll be live tweeting. And I take pictures while I tweet. So I can't really – it's too hard to eat. and It's too hard to eat and tweet. So I will, I will eat um, before the show. I will do movie math, then I will relax, watch something else and have my dinner, and then I will be Oscar coverage. Chico, I haven't seen Zone of Interest yet. Brett says, Grace, can you do a review or watch along for Godzilla Minus One? I would like to do a watch along for Godzilla Minus One. I don't know, it's taken it so long to come out. It's crazy. No snacks were the Oscars either. I gotta, I gotta, maybe I'll, maybe I'll munch on some almonds. Yeah, I guess I better have some snacks. I'll have like some almonds maybe. Some, maybe some, maybe like some shrimp. You know, I, I told you I'm trying to be very healthy in what I eat. So, it really cuts down on the snackage. Mmm, yummy, roasted unsalted almonds. But I have to say, I have come to like them quite a bit. Oh, yeah, everybody, don't forget the Oscars start early. They start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Future movie actor says, well, I don't think it's right. Barbie being so heavily influenced by the toy line is why I can't deny it's placed. But it's not influenced by the toy line at all. All right, let's see here. I can't eat chicken nuggets right now, Jamie. SMR Goose says, do you think that any nominees won't show up? No, no, I think for sure they're going to show up because uh, it's a big deal. Who wouldn't want to show up for that? Um, rank the best picture nominees, Daniel? All right, I'll take that bait. All right, where is it? Okay. I feel the best film on this list is Barbie. Oh, boy, I shouldn't have done this. All right, Barbie is the best film. Then I guess I would go Oppenheimer. You know, I'm going to do this like in terms of like just not my personal opinion, but like the quality of the film. So Barbie, Oppenheimer, Anatomy of a Fall, American Fiction, Past Lives, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Poor Things, and then I didn't see Zone of Interest. All right. Ah, oh, Stephen, I see you producing the show there. You would like to see Hallie, uh, Lil, uh, uh, Michelle Yeoh give that Oscar to Lily Gladstone. Let's see here. Uh, Oliver says, you can never have enough fashion, Grace. Uh, let's see here. I can't do a poll for best picture because I only have four things. And I only have four. They only let me do four spaces. Yes, they're bringing back it where the former winner presents to the new one. They're bringing back that tradition, which I love. I love that tradition. Uh, Bla Blair Wraith says the biggest snub at the Oscars for me was when Tony Collette didn't get nominated for Hereditary and also what they did to Angela Bassett for Black Panther 2. Yeah, that was really tough. I felt bad for Angela Bassett. You know, obviously. I don't know. I mean, I'm, you know, I don't like hereditary. Uh, so. Let's see here. Questions and comments. Danny says, hi, Grace. What else does Margo have to do to win an Oscar? I'm not sure. I think it's going to be a while for her to win an Oscar at this point because uh, I think she just did so well and made so much money off of Barbie that uh, it's going to take her a minute to cal recalibrate. Hey, Dan. Mr. Real Shane says, who will be the final? Uh, I don't know, Mr. Real Shane. That's a morbid question. I don't know. Uh, let's see. 
let's see here. RP, RPW Foodie says, do you think Oppie will get a billion now after all the projected wins? I'm an, uh, no, I'm also, I guess maybe I'll technically get a billion, but I'm a believer in your initial run is what counts. Jamie says, who will get the most camera time? I think it's going to be the Oppenheimer group, and I think Ryan Gosling's going to have a big night. Even though he's not going to win, he's going to have a big night. And I think they'll show a lot of, uh, I think Greta Gerwig will be there. Obviously, she's nominated for screenplay. So I think they'll show the Barbie team, and I hope it's not too embarrassing for them. Dan M says, saw Dune 2 last night and already looking forward to their Oscar sweep. I don't know about an Oscar sweep in terms of wins, but I do think they're going to get a lot, a lot, and a lot, a lot of nominations. Chico, I'm not nervous for the Jimmy Kimmel opening monologue. I just hope it's good. We have four more minutes of questions. Austin Williams, I hope there's some surprises as well. And Jamie, that's a good point. Jimmy Kimmel, certainly, he is very neutral. Although, Will, I would agree with you that I think he should avoid politics. I think we just want this show to go well, and uh, I certainly don't think we want that to be what everybody's talking about when it comes to the Oscars. Heinz E. Adventures. I was at the Oscars one time, not for the actual show, but Dolby invited me out a few years ago. You might have seen that video, and I got to do like a little bit of a coverage of their involvement, and I got to go and see the red carpet, and I got to see the theater before uh, you know it went live, and show the hallway where the winners go to go answer the questions, and it was really interesting. It was really fun. MM92 says, hi Grace, how much money do studios put into Oscar campaigns? Uh, you know, I think quite a bit, and obviously not like they do to promote a movie, but it's a genuine expense, which is why they pick which films they're going to promote and which ones they aren't. Jamie Isaac Choi says, who would you prefer as the Oscars host? I guess someone who's a little bit more of a comedic artist. You know, Billy Crystal and Bob Hope, of course, is the original. He's the OG Oscar host, but Billy Crystal was really an incredible host. And so I would love to see somebody you know, along those lines. You know who would be fun to do sometime? Uh, and it is also owned by Disney, uh, the Only Murders group, the Only Murders crew, you know? I think that would be fun because they're so Oscar-y. You know, Martin Short, Steve Martin, and Selena Gomez. So Steve Martin actually did host the Oscars at one point. Didn't got, it did not go so well. Didn't he, like, co-host, I think, with Alec Baldwin or something? But I don't know. I think that, I think that would be fun. Something like that would be nice. Like if they could do it in character. I would love it. Yeah, Martin Short in character from uh, Early Murders. That would just be a delight. Yeah, Ellen DeGeneres hosted quite successfully, you know, back in the day when she, you know, before everybody, before she got canceled. Blair Wraith says, my favorite mo moment was when Fury Road got its Oscars back in 2000. I, I don't know. I, I, I thought, you know, I thought Seth MacFarlane was an underrated host. I thought his, uh, his uh, dryer gag was very funny. Uh, Jacob Knight, I don't think they'll have any scandal. I think they're, you know, I think that, you know, Will Smith has been banned from the Oscars. It has had significant ramifications for his career. Um... You know, I think that that was, they, they created a, 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 a considerable deterrent. Oh, bye, Jamie. One of three Jamies. J.A. said, is presenting at the Oscars considered a big deal? It is, because of the publicity. Not only are you going to be uh, on camera in front of the, everybody who's watching, the millions of people watching, but also you're in front of the industry. And you remind people that you exist. And they're like, oh, you know who I just saw on the Oscar stage and they look great? I'm going to consider them for my new movie. Uh, H HCTube, what a nice thing to say. 
Austin Williams says, how do they choose who presents best picture? They try and make it a big deal. They try and get like usually like someone who's really iconic in the industry, someone you don't usually see. That's why it's sometimes, remember once it was Warren, Warren Beatty, I think, and Annette Benning came out together, Elizabeth Taylor. You know, they try and get someone, you know, like where everyone goes, oh, wow, that's a big deal. And so they'll probably try and, and do something along those lines again. Uh, that's right, Jennifer, you're doing, you're, you, said, you said the thing about the clips, that you're just watching all the clips, and that's a good point about how it cuts out the boring parts. So you can just see the high, it's really an instant highlight reel. All right, it's 12.25. Let me just do a couple of shout-outs. Where are you? What are you doing on this Friday afternoon? Jeff Blue, what's working FEMOT mean? Sensation says, you're ordering snacks. Uh, I'm ordering some snacks for your Oscar. Oh, I'm glad you're going to be uh, tuning in. Je oh, Jeff Blue is working from home in Buffalo, New York. And Movies TV Reviews is in Puerto Rico. Oh, at the doctor's office. I hope everything's good. MM92 is about to watch Barbie again while Blair Wraith is at work in North Carolina. Elia says, it's 930 in California. Slow down. Yeah, it's good morning. And then Jason Spitzer says, listening to you while at work in Avon, Ohio. Oh, yay. Well, Carter James says, watching with my boyfriend in Brooklyn. Hello. And Jennifer Escalana uh, says, watching this, uh, breaking up my work day. I'm glad to be a nice little uh, break in the day. Brett Crandall is revamping his website in Kansas. Well, Tim O'Dock says, back in Orlando for another Disney weekend before I start my new job. Oh, I'm glad you're celebrating. That's fantastic. Michael McKenna says, picking up my son, surprising him by taking him to the airport so he can celebrate his 21st birthday with his brother in Austin. What a great birthday gift, Michael. You're a great dad. Uh, let's see here. Future, future, future movie actor says, hoping for some fun Jimmy Kimmel and Matt Damon bits. Oh, that would be so funny. That would be really good. I hope they do something. I love that. Warren P. says, in L.A., making breakfast before work. I love waking up with a lot of you. That's awesome. HC Tube 3 says, unloading groceries to a third floor apartment. Oh, that is brutal. But think of the exercise that you're getting. Well, David Q is organizing an office St. Patrick's Day celebration for next week. Ah, David, I love it. You're making the workday better for everybody. And Just Blaze Disney says, planning a spring break last minute vacation. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Spring break is coming up, right? And Leo is thinking about going to see Past Lives today, later. You should. It's a good movie. A little bit of a downer movie for a Friday, but you want to get ready for the Oscars. Uh, Lisa McDougal, driving to Chicago, road trip. Well, Senior Lullaby is playing the new Fortnite season. I see that Cora from Avatar The Last Airbender is in there. Uh, Targaryen Poppy is in Miami getting ready for a flight to work a flight to Ohio. And let's see here. Carrie says, at work, making it through Friday. I love it. And then Matt Stone is waiting for a burger, enjoying the 75-degree weather. A burger in 75 degrees. You're living your best life, Matt. I love it. Uh, Emilio says, uh, back in uh, Machu Picchu, taking a pause from work, trying to resolve a social conflict and decide pizza or burger for my family Oscar meal. Ooh. Mm, I'm going to go pizza because you can, like, have it throughout the telecast, you know, Burger might be too much of a meal. That's, that would be my vote. But, you know, you can't go wrong with burger or pizza. You take care too, Haunted Autumn. Rashad says, packing and getting ready for my staycation this weekend. Oh, you're packing for a staycation? Isn't it already all there? Oh, I love it. But I hope you have a great time, Rashad. Oh, are you like, oh, are you packing? Like, are you staying at, in Vegas at a hotel? That's the way to do a staycation. I thought you were just going to be at home. You're going to have a great weekend, Rashad. I'm glad you're treating yourself. Let's see here. Oh, Danny's moving to Orlando. Finally making his dreams come true. Dan, Dan M is. Oh, that's awesome. And then Maruna says, I'm getting ready for an International Women's Day rave. Putting on the glitter. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. A lot of people are saying you should do burgers and pizza. Live it up, man. It's the Oscars. Is daylight savings time this weekend, Warren? Let's check. Oh my God, it is. Are we losing time or getting time? We're losing time. Ah, I'm 
getting very little sleep on Sunday night as it is because of the Oscars and I have to get up early. Let me make a note. Boo. Thank you, though, for reminding us. Daylight savings time. Lose an hour. Oh, I'm, I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. <laughs> All right, everybody, I better get going. I got a lot to do. All right, um, thank you so much for joining me for this early stream. Uh, Jack, I don't know if you were here. Um, uh, a BTT viewer said he was going to join today for his birthday, but I did not see you in the chat, Jack. Um, but anyway, I hope that everybody had a, uh, has a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you on Sunday, not only for movie math, but then, of course, I'll be live-tweeting those Oscars. All right, everybody, bye. Bye-bye.